if I knew about a property that wasn't on the MLS, would you want to know about it? I mean, that alone will give you tons of response. We just heard a, a story recanted about how many leads came back that were kind of just lying dormant in the CRM. This just raised their hand. Yep, I'd like to know about it. And now you've got a whole new buyer pool and I'll bet you the majority of them are also gonna have a home to sell. What's happening? JC Agajanian here, broker associate with the Whistle Realty Group at eXp, summarizing for you the Monday morning mastermind as we do every week as part of the Fast Forward Network. So today we've got three great topics to cover from uh, questions from our members and of course lots of feedback from other members in our group. The first one is uh, a, an agent newer in the business who is eager to switch from primarily being a buyer's agent to taking on more of that listing agent responsibility. Uh, so switching from buyer agent to listing agent. Uh, the next one is all about tracking your numbers and the third one is about creating a system to help you generate leads and business from your sphere of influence. So let's get into the first one right away, switching from a buyer's agent to a listing agent. Plenty of people were willing to raise their hands and weigh in with lots of experience on this topic today. And the first person had some great points to bring in. The concept was let's go ahead and build your business using sweat equity as opposed to check equity because it can be expensive to go in heavy with check equity and start paying for ads and billboards and who, I mean, the, the sky is the limit. You could end up with bus benches and TV and radio commercials if you really get serious about your listing agent advertisements. So the idea is let's focus on what you can control now with your effort. And so part of that uh, sweat equity, as we call it, is paying your dues by um, calling on expires and fizzbos. It seems like it always, almost always comes back to that. But um, it's not just a matter of putting in the time and hammering the phones, but it takes the hard work of really learning and studying, taking seriously your scripts and dialogues, doing lots of role play, trying to figure out how to control your tonality, what you're saying to people, really understanding how to be the authority on the phone, how to really come across like an expert so that you you thoroughly understand what it is you're talking about. This is only going to come with time. You can't wave a magic wand and you can't write a check to acquire the experience and expertise it takes to really understand how to convert somebody who's either frustrated that their home's not selling on their own because they thought it was going to be easy because of this market we just came out of or uh, someone who's actually actively upset at another realtor because they didn't do their job. Well, a lot of times we know maybe they did, but in a lot of cases they didn't do their job to get the home sold. Um, so this is, this is a hard job, but if you put in the work and figure it out, you can, without doing anything else that I'm gonna talk about right now, this alone can take you from a buyer's agent to a listing agent. There are plenty of people in my market and of course in markets across the country that didn't do anything but go in hard, hammer these phones, and then follow it up with things like lots of open houses and lots of signage for their open houses and door knocking. Like just the good old fashioned hard work will, in some cases, depending on the kind of competition in the farm that you're fo focusing on, it can enable you to go ahead and take over an entire farm just with those activities. No joke, I've seen it happen. So that's the first thing. Um, as far as, you know, getting into the weeds and, and maybe an example of like one line that could be really helpful in among lots of lines and lots of scripts that you're going to be using is, you know, it really doesn't matter if it's just a seller or if it's a buyer or if it's just somebody that you met at the grocery store, yeah. like help me understand your current living situation. That's a great line. Help me understand your current living situation because you may be talking to someone who either came in as a buyer lead or is focused on buying a home, but without that key question, help me understand about your current living situation, help me understand more about your current living situation, they might never say, well, actually, I need to sell this house in order to buy the next one, or you know, what other information may come out as a result of that. And you could lose 
the crux, the most important piece of that conversation that you were supposed to key in on just because you didn't ask the right questions. So that's just one of a handful of really great questions to ask somebody regardless of who you think they are, if they're just a buyer, if they're just a seller, or, or what the situation may be. That'll help you lead to the right conversation. Um, another great line that's pretty similar is, um, I was just calling to connect because I speak to a lot of people like yourself all the time that have questions about real estate. What questions do you have right now? Isn't this a fantastic open-ended question you can ask of somebody who's talking about real estate? This conversation could go in a million of different directions, but by asking that one, what questions do you have right now about real estate? It helps you quickly get in sync with that person, track with who they are and what they're interested in and what they already know and what they don't already know so that you can step in and fill that gap and be the resource that they actually need. Huge couple lines right there. Help me understand your current living situation and what questions around real estate do you have right now? Seems so simple, but as you unpack it, it's pretty powerful. Um, another great idea to help kind of switch from the constant buyer work to working more with sellers is to, um, you know, now we've actually had, believe it or not, enough time from all the people that have purchased during COVID and um, they've been there a little while now. So maybe some of those people settled and compromised and weren't really excited about their property, but they were excited about the rates or they were just caught up in the frenzy. You may have some people looking to move up or move sideways or move down or do something different just from a year or two ago during that crazy COVID time. A um, little bit of headwinds as far as the idea of them wanting to replace a super low rate with a higher one, but there's plenty of motivations that will outweigh those headwinds. Um, and it's just a matter of finding out who those people are. So, so that's a great idea is to go back to people that have bought recently, you know, probably starting the beginning of 2020 up until more recently and say, hey, you guys happy with where you're at? Um, that could that could lead to some listings right there. Now, as far as, you know, more predictable, ongoing, you know, great systems to employ, um, to retain and, and attract past clients, your sphere of influence to become more sellers, um, there's lots of things that we do in our office and that uh, plenty of our, our colleagues and, and peers do in their offices as well. And one of the huge ones is client appreciation events. Um, they're going to help you lead to getting listings from past clients that you helped purchase in the first place. Um, you know, I, I do, we do a, a handful of things. We do four main client events with our company, and I do another four on my own, just with my own personal database. So we've got the big budget events that Kyle puts on, and we've got lower budget events that I do myself, and I call them intimate. You know, hey, come out for an intimate night of, of drinks on the deck. You know, just mellow, calm, nothing big, so that if you have a great turnout, well, that's cool, but it's probably not gonna be huge. You're not gonna get hundreds of people based on purely on the invitation rate. But if you don't have the greatest turnout, if it's a handful of people in your backyard, well, hey, you called it intimate. This is what it was supposed to be. So there's no saving face to be had here. You did this deliberately. So that's a great little trick if you get in your own head about your reach or your ability to have a big party or anything like that. It's not necessary. Uh, you could do huge events like we do. We rent an entire movie theater sometimes and pack it full and have to turn people away. We do big things in the park with food trucks and you know, we take over an entire event, but we also do these small things as well, and they're huge. So you could get in where you fit in there and have a client appreciation event. I've heard of people just taking a little corner of a bar without even reserving it ahead of time and just saying, hey, I'm going to put a, a tab at the, with the bartender over here. I'm going to be hosting these people over here. And that could be your intimate event. It doesn't have to be elaborate. It doesn't have to be extremely costly. It Because really more important then the event itself, more important than uh, how many people show up, is you reaching out with a, with a written invitation, inviting them to this thing, following up with an email, sending them a text message, and giving them a phone call, making sure that they saw all those things. Because you really just want to stay in touch with this person. It's great if they come out, if you're able to catch up and, and have a beer or do whatever you're going to do um, to get together. But 
There's plenty of people, the overwhelming majority of the people that you invite are not gonna be able to make it, but you want them to know you're thinking about them, you want them to know that you value that relationship. So the invitations, the follow-up calls, texts, emails, all that stuff is frankly more important than the event itself. So it really, let's get our, our, our focus off of what may or may not be slowing us down from throwing the event in the first place and put it on the value you're gonna get from someone going, that was that was pretty nice of them. They invited me to saying I couldn't make it, but gosh, I forgot about them. I'm glad they're thinking about me. That's cool. You know, it's a warm and fuzzy that you're giving them, and hopefully that you're doing them, giving them four times a year. Um, so another educational tool that you can give yourself while you still are working with buyers, and frankly, I don't know that most listing agents really ever lay down buyer work entirely. Some of them do. Um, but showing homes in an area you're focused on, whether this is a new, more expensive neighborhood that you're trying to break into, or just an area where you'd like to be the listing agent of choice because you've really done a lot of buyer work there, um, showing those homes, going to broken care, broker caravans, being inside houses that are for sale will help you, will serve you and educate you because you're gonna learn about these properties, you're gonna learn about who's doing what in the area, um, and you're gonna be able to demonstrate expertise when you do get in front of that seller, when it is time for that listing appointment, because you could say, that's right, I was actually in that property over there, it's, it's actually not quite as nice as yours because of X, Y, and Z. For that reason, I think we can use it as a perfect comparable, however, let's make the adjustment here, blah, blah, blah you know what, you just earn lots of points just by having taken the time to get out and spend your maybe a couple hours every week, uh, whatever the case may be, getting to know the inventory in your farm. Um, so showing homes, going on broken caravans is another great way to do that and become uh, more of an expert as the listing agent in that area. Um, and, you know, another one, this is kind of a, uh, almost off topic, but it could lead to those, those sell buys as well. And this is just kind of a bonus in here from the subject that I, I had to jot down. Basically, a great one-line text blast. Hey, so-and-so, if I knew about a property that was not on the MLS, would, would you wanna know about it? I mean, think about all the different ways that we try and cut through the clutter and get at somebody. But something like this, it's a one-liner. You're not inundating them with, you know, niceties and how you doing and blah, blah, blah. Just if I knew about a property that wasn't on the MLS, would you want to know about it? I mean, that alone will give you tons of response. We just heard a, a story recanted about how many leads came back that were kind of just lying dormant in the CRM that's just raise their hand. Yep, I'd like to know about it. And now you've got a whole new buyer pool. And I'll bet you the majority of them are also going to have a home to sell. So um, that's it. Uh, for that topic, we're going to move on to tracking and measuring your numbers. This is huge for anyone who's really moved on the basics and is seriously taking their biz their their real estate sales as a business and not just a job, right? So you need to have your, you need to run your business like a business and not just like a sales job, right? So first and foremost, market stats, you know, general information about the area that's always going to be readily available from your local realtor association. So we can kind of just take that off the table right away. Um, now we're going to move into more personal stuff, your team data and your individual agent data. And there's a ton of different tech solutions that you can use to track this information. In our office, we use Sisu that is stacked on top of Follow Up Boss, which is our CRM. Um, and they work in, in conjunction with each other and give us great tools to work with so that we know um, where we're at, how many phone calls, all the different metrics that we're, we're using are tracked there, um, all the way up to the important stuff with, uh, with income. Um, CTE is another company similar to CSU. I don't have any personal experience with that, but uh, it's another uh, data tracking tool for real estate agents that came highly recommended as well. Um, what are we gonna track though? What information are we gonna track? Well, there's a lot of important information that will help you understand where your business is and where the gaps are. And if you're not quite getting the results that you want, you know, 
usually you can use this data to zero in and figure out what you need to focus on to get better and fill that gap and then keep growing your business. So the obvious conversations, um, they're important to track. Um, before we get into the metrics, all means of communication should be done in your CRM and should be trackable. You know, conversations, emails, text messages, um, all these things, you should know how many times a prospect has been contacted by you and by how. Um, this goes as well on top of that, if you're using any uh, AI to text message for you or any other um, drip campaigns that maybe aren't AI, but they're sending out an email or a phone call or a voicemail drop or a text message periodically, this all has to be trackable, right? So, because having this accurate information can really act like a light that's just being shined down on your business. And you're like, that's a strength right there. I need to do more of that. And that's a weakness. I need to improve in that spot right there. It's, it's really what we look at this information as. So important data to track, dials made, appointments set, appointments met, showings, offers written, open escrows, uh, closed escrows. You know, th these are just the basics. You could get even more into the weeds with different data points to track, but you got to have these pieces. Um, and you'd be surprised because uh, I learned today that actually increasing your conversion rate by only 0.2% can increase your revenue by 25% to your bottom line. So um, actually technically revenue is top line, but you, you get the idea. So the, another huge piece of this whole tracking conversation, um, and this goes to tracking your time as well. Um, this is a topic that I've, I've coached and taught on in our team as well, is, is your calendar and, and being accountable to your time and tracking your time and how you spend it. But more important than what you're tracking is honesty and integrity with what you're doing. You gotta be honest with yourself. Um, if you have in your calendar that you're going to be dialing for the hour and about half of that hour, you were actually just BSing with your coworker. Well, you should probably go in and adjust that to a half hour dials and maybe even fill in BSing with my coworker so that I'm real with myself on my calendar. The same thing goes if you are out door knocking, um, be real about it. And so one way to help yourself out, um, is to just use use more tech you know if you're if you're out door knocking you can use one of the exercise apps that maps out your route it'll tell you how long you went how quickly you went and exactly where you went and for how long you stopped at each door because it's just it's tracking your walk uh, there's one called map my walk and I'm sure there's lots of others that are more focused on running and walking than they are real estate but they're helpful for that scenario um you know it's Really the whole point of this tracking business is to help you and it's to have accountability added to yourself, accountability added to your team lead if you're responsible to somebody like that. Um, so yeah, let's not BS it, let's be real about it. And um, you know, the same thing goes with dialing and text messages or, or whatever the case, you know, use a dialer to track it for you so that you don't have to count how many dials you went or how long you're on the phone. You just set it up and go. Now you can actually focus on the activity at time at the hand instead of trying to do your job and track what you're doing at the same time. Um, and that's for the same reason that we use follow a boss as a CRM is because we can make the phone calls out, the text messages out, the emails out all through that CRM. It creates a log of it for us. We don't have to think about recording what we're doing. Um, do it through, through your CRM so that it's captured and then it's all trackable. A really important thing that people often don't think to track as far as this tracking and measuring conversation goes. How about your profit? <laughs> I mean, we can get down into the weeds like all these different data points and things that I've talked about so far, but let's go ahead and zoom out and say, okay, we know at the end of the year that this was your GCI, um, but how much were your expenses? What kind of splits did you have? How much advertising? You know, let's figure out what you actually made as a profit because Honestly, what you take home is what's most important. So, um, so track your profit, know your business, and more importantly, know what it takes to keep your business running. Um, and on that same subject, a huge part of this profit equation is your commission rate. 
Are you regularly laying down and cutting your commission? Do you start with a reduced commission before even trying to get a full fee? These are important pieces because, you know, anything that you do with regularity, especially if you do any sort of volume of transactions, call it, call it even just small amounts, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 transactions a year times what? Could be a 1% or, you know, several hundred dollars even on each transaction will really add up to likely at least a whole nother transaction being lost or gained because of how you're conducting your business in each in each individual transaction and meeting that you're having with clients. So be sensitive to that. Don't just throw it away as though it's not a big deal because it is. So you can you can give yourself a raise by just not lowering your fees so often. Um, finally, before we move on, another important thing to consider uh, while tracking and measuring everything is your mindfulness. How are your stress levels? How happy? How miserable are you? Uh, when are you happy? When are you not happy? Um, there are uh, also apps for this. There's one of them called Ulta Self. Um, there's other things that you can just really track any new habit that you're trying to build and install into a regular basis, there's there's apps for that. And so it's good to know, you know, where you're at. And maybe, you, you know, after doing this for a long period of time, you might pick up some, some similarities, some things that repeat themselves, maybe at a certain day, time of day, or day of the week, or, you know, week of the month, you feel one thing over another. Well, shoot, wouldn't that be important for you to know? First of all, just for the awareness so that you can maybe take steps to adjust your schedule accordingly. But more importantly, now we can look at the root of it and say, okay, how can I affect myself and, and maybe change this routine or habit? So once again, it all comes back to tracking and measuring. And that's why we took plenty of time to dig into this. It's a great subject that never gets old. Okay. Finally, we're moving on to creating a system for your sphere of influence um, and how you can uh, grow business from the people that you already know. Well, um, immediately the conversation moved towards how are you taking care of people that you already know, especially if they're past clients um, and or sphere of influence or SOI uh, contacts, you know, send them gifts once in a while. I use a system called Client Giant, um, and I really want to just take care of anybody that has um, that I think can be or has proven themselves to be an advocate for myself and my business or are appreciative in any other way, or even people that maybe uh, have their sphere of influence, that have their, you know, residence in an area where I would like to see more uh, business come like more clients like them, right? So if I've got an ideal client, well, that's definitely somebody I'm going to want to add to the system. And basically, there's multiple different plans that you can go with. But one of them is a simple quarterly event that just sends it over to them. It's usually appropriate for the time of year and just kind of reminds them that you're thinking about them and you appreciate them, right? Um, you can also uh, add a separate plan to the same system that I'm talking about called Client Giant, where it'll send out uh, birthday gifts. Um, and you can also do something that uh, that I do regularly is use um, a, a greeting card company. Um, I've used both send out cards and postable in the past to make sure that not only birthdays, but anniversaries, home purchase anniversaries, um, like I said, birthdays, and anything else important that I can come up with, I'm going to be making sure that I send a card that maybe isn't handwritten, but it looks pretty nice and looks similar to, to handwritten. And it's just going to be a reminder that we're thinking about you and we appreciate you. So um, another great tool for staying in touch with people that you have worked with in the past or that you would like to because they are in your sphere of influence in the future is to update them on their home's value. And you can demonstrate that uh, you've got something that's going to work better for them than a, a Zillow or a Trulia or a Redfin will. It's going to give them tools to, to moderate the report based on home condition and, and how they think their home stacks up to the list of comparable homes being presented. It's called HomeBot. Uh, we put all of our clients on HomeBot. It's a great system and it's interactive and, and like I said, superior to things they can get online. More importantly, it'll send them just one email a month updating them on the, tr 
the direction and trajectory of their specific local market. It's going to tell them what homes have sold and what haven't. And it's just another touch every month that you're adding to multiple other touches that you're doing quarterly. You know, we mentioned earlier the phone calls for the client events. Um, I just talked about, you know, quarterly gifts for people that you've worked with or that you want to stay in touch with. Um, you know, there's lots of different touch points throughout the year that these people that you value are going to be hearing from you. And it's going to be impossible for them to forget you when the time is right, which is what this is all about, right? You don't want to be pushy. You don't want to be weird, but you don't want to be forgotten either. So this is a great way to do it. Um, an interesting topic that was brought up today that I hadn't really heard um, before is the idea of intentionally inviting family members and close friends to the transaction instead of being kind of turned off of it and saying, no, that person shouldn't come on our showing today. Ask people if other people can come to your buyer consult, if other people can come to your listing appointment, if other people are going to be maybe not decision makers, but interested in the process so that they can be there as a, you know, maybe a fly on the wall or maybe a supportive family member. I was it was, it was a little bit of a paradigm shift when I was hearing this conversation. And the idea is that we're going we're gonna to show up. We're going to do the best job we can anyways, right? We're going to present value. We're going to, you know, exemplify expertise. We're going to do all the things that we do at these meetings. So why not have these other people here, which would enable us to build trust not only with the client that's already decided to work with us, but also the people close to them. And they can get up close, firsthand experience it's like they're in the front row seat at the show, right? And here we are doing our thing, showing them how it works. So that was just a good idea, something I hadn't heard of before, uh, something you can implement to try and grow that SOI business. Um, client events are coming up again. Just mentioned them, but um, like I said, they don't have to be huge. They don't have to be elaborate, but they should be done. They can, you know, plenty of ideas. You can do a family photo day in the park. I mean, what does that cost you? Parks are free. You, you pay one photographer to have a setup and you invite a bunch of people. And then the same thing, the phone calls, the emails, the, the physical invitation, the text messages, all the same things that we talked about before. The reasons we do this is because of the reach outs, because of those conversations we're going to have. They can be done for something inexpensive, like a family fo photo do day, a barbecue in the park, like I said, you could go on the other end and spend a bunch of money. We do a movie night. We pay Santa to come out at Christmas time and do photos there and throw a whole cocktail party. Or you could do like a bingo night, you know, or show up at at a bar and, and pay for the tab. Or you can set up a, a happy hour with a taco cart. I mean, there's there's endless ideas that you can do anywhere from huge to small. But the point is not the idea. The point is not the event. The point is the reason to reach out to these people. I'm, I know I'm, I'm repeating myself, but it's that important. That's the reason we're doing this. It's not because you've got the greatest barbecue you found in town. Forget about that. The point is the phone calls, the conversations, the physical invitation. The, the, you've gone above and beyond. And now you're in communication again with someone who maybe it's been a long time. And now you're ha just back in rapport once again. So a final idea to help grow your sphere of influence and the business you're going to get from your sphere is to create a stronger personal brand in your community. And now we're talking a little bit more about social media because it's the most cost effective way to do this. Um, but if you really focus on educational pieces of content, you can make, you know, Instagram reels or TikToks or, you know, make long form or short form videos for YouTube and blast them everywhere. Whatever channels you use, if you're just heavy into LinkedIn or you don't do anything but Snapchat, I don't care what you use. Um, find your people. Make sure that, you know, just because you like Snapchat, if none of your friends and family or or sphere are there, then don't go there. You want to go where your people are. You want to be able to communicate with them and you want to demonstrate expertise, like I said. Um, so maybe creating some sort of educational reels or short form videos or even longer ones, make a whole series. Um, this is a great idea. What if you made a series explaining taking them from A to Z on how to get started to buy a home or what's most important when talking about selling your property and moving up. And you just make maybe a handful of videos on that. Well, wouldn't that be great to give a link to somebody else and say, hey, you know, this would be great if you know someone who you might want to refer, refer my way. This is a great way they can start getting a little bit of information without even having to really reach out to me. So 
that kind of sounds weird, right? Because you want them to reach out to you. But if you are helping someone else get to know you before you get a chance to know them, that gives them the level of comfort and it kind of pre-sells them on your services because you're demonstrating that you know what you're talking about. So all of these ideas are great. I hope that you take them and get tons of business from your sphere um, and that you can sell lots of homes as a listing agent, and not just work as a buyer's agent all the time. And, and very importantly, that you're tracking and measuring your numbers to help your business grow. That's all I got for now. Please feel free to reach out right here with any comments or questions. Or if you want to take the conversation offline, I'd be happy to, to chat soon. Talk to you soon.